Because slope is a rate of change, it's something we approach in the real world very often, even if you don't realize that we're talking about slope. So some examples of how slope is used in daily life. I want you to pause for a second and come up with some of your own and then see if they match the ones I came up with. The first thing I automatically think of with slope is a mountain slope. We know mountain slopes can be steep or not. And so when I hear slope, that's the first thing I think of. The next thing I think of is roads. And actually it kind of goes back to mountains as well. If you've ever driven through the mountains, they'll have signs that talk about how steep the road is and that might impact truckers. The next one I think of is roofs. Some rooftops have more of a slope or steep pitch than others. Same as slides. Kitty slides tend to have a more gentle slope, whereas if you're on one or if it's a water park, you might see one with a very steep slope. And I'm going to put etc. because there is literally a limitless amount of ideas that we could come up with. So when we talk about the slope in these situations, I want you to remember that slope is another word for rate of change. So we are trying to find the rate of change in each of these scenarios. In the first scenario, Ellie just got her first cell phone plan. She pays $79 per month plus a $150 activation fee. After 10 months, she has spent a total of $940. What is the slope? All right, we just looked for three pieces of information, $79 per month, a $150 activation fee, and a total of 940. There's so many equations we could come up with here, but we're looking for the rate. In this scenario, there's only one rate, $79 per month. So each month, the rise is 79. The run is one, but 79 over one is 79. In the next example, Janae is buying food for a party. She is buying a cheese tray for $4.50 and a few pounds of fruit for $1.99 each. She spends $16.44. Okay, look for the information that you're being asked. What is the slope or rate of change? Price per, in that case, that's $1.99 per pound of fruit. So the slope is $1.99. Next example, gas costs $189 per gallon, and an oil change is $29.99. Ella spent $41.33 at this service station. What is the slope or the rate of change? I'm looking for $189 per gallon. Last scenario, Maggie drove 45 miles per hour for eight hours. What is the slope or the rate? 45 miles per hour. The slope is 45. Identify the slope in each situation. Explain what the slope means in the context of the situation. Okay, so now we got to understand not just what is the slope, but what does it mean? Ryan is building a deck. He needs pieces of wood that are eight feet long. Each eight foot piece costs $2.75. He has already spent 124.62 on other supplies. Identify the rate of change. So there's lots of information. We've got eight feet long pieces of wood, how much that costs, and how much he has spent. But what is the rate of change or the slope in this situation? It's 275 each eight foot piece. So what does that mean in the context of the situation? The rate of change or the slope is the cost of a single eight foot piece of wood. If I wanted to write that as a rate, I could say 275 per eight foot piece, since we typically write rates as fractions. All right, number two, Ben's taxi company charges a $4 fee plus 45 cents per mile. Identify the rate of change. So which one of those is an actual rate? 45 cents per mile. So the rate is 0 0.45. What does that mean in the context of the problem? The rate represents the cost per mile for the taxi. If you wanted to write that as a fraction, we can have 45 cents per one mile. Next example, number three, 
Mr. Nelson is taking his students on a field trip to an observatory. The observatory charges a $100 trip fee plus $650 per student. Identify the rate of change. Which one of those is a rate? $650 per student. So the rate or slope is $650. What does the slope mean in the context of the situation? That represents the cost per student. If we were to write that as a fraction, we could say 650 per one student. Last example, number four. A new ski resort has opened up in a neighboring town. One of the ski run, runs rises eight feet for every horizontal change of 10 feet. What is the slope of the ski run? Remember, rise, that's our change in y, and horizontal change, that's our change in x. So what is the slope of the ski run? Well, first, we have to do the rise, which is 8 feet, over the run, which is 10 feet. So if I simplify that, the slope is 4 over 5. How do we find that? Rise over run, which is 8 over 10. And I know that those are both divisible by 2. So that gives me 8 divided by 2 is 4, 10 divided by 2 is 5. What does that mean in the context of the situation? So for this mountain, this rise is 4 feet for every 5 foot horizontal change. Since we already wrote that as a fraction, if you want to think about what that would look like, I'm going to draw my mountain here. Okay, there's my mountain. There's the snow line. Now I did mine much steeper than what it is. Here, let me put another. There's another slope. So if I go up four feet, I go over five feet. So that's the slope. So you can see why I said that my original line was much too steep because this has more of a horizontal change than it does a vertical change, which means it's not going to be as steep, which means that's probably the slope that I want to ski on.